beat Cassidy right now in a um, battle one on one. We'll talk about it Friday. We're gonna get into no this doubt. Friday because yeah, now fuck that. Yeah, salute to Cass though. Salute to we just yeah. Definitely. All definitely. day long. Yes, sir. But you tuned into the Uncensored Truth podcast with your brother, Old God, and Sam Ant sitting over there from Viral Hip Hop News. If you're listening on YouTube, do me a favor. Go ahead and hit the like button and make sure that you share this video. That's the only two things that we ever ask you to do. Hit the like button and share the video. Now, I want to talk about this because we were like we were saying last week, it was like full Nipsey hustle. A yeah. lot of things kept coming out. Last two weeks. Yeah, last two weeks, pretty much. Um, But drink champ sat down with bird man almost uh almost two years now after rick ross came to wheezy's defense with idols become rivals which actually a great 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 album well the verse that you know um birdman was responding to it was um rick ross he said i pray you find the kindness in your heart for wayne his entire life he gave you what there was to gain i watched this whole debacle so i'm part to blame he said some more stuff in there pretty much Coming at Birdman saying how he made this and left people how starving. You half a billion. Yeah, yeah. Team starving, nigga. Yeah, and, and pretty much, you know, just reprimanded him for his situation with Wayne. Now, Birdman finally, I don't know why it took so long for him to talk about this, but he said, and I quote, I just came up. I mind my own mother effing business. Birdman said about the controversy. I don't get in no other niggas' business. So when another nigga and another niggas' business to me, that's a violation. That's how I come up. Simple. I ain't never been no man to speak down on no man in this business. Never did. Birdman continued to say, that ain't my thing because I know how hard this shit is. I ain't here to downplay a nigga. I want to see a nigga come up, period. So as far as me speaking down on a nigga, I don't ever do it. Now, if a nigga disrespect me, it's F him. It's F him. Or bitch. We kill, we shoot, whatever you want to do. But as far as me speaking down on another nigga in this game... That ain't my M.O. Because I do my thing. And as we know, this is in response to Rick Ross, once again, reprimanding him about the way that he handled the Little Wayne situation, the contract dispute, paying him the money that he allegedly owed him and whatnot. We know they handled that since, you know, um, then. But um, Sam, man, what do you think about, you know, Birdman finally addressing this? A lot of people didn't talk about this, but we are. Yeah. We think about him, you know, finally, um, pretty much, I would say checking Rick Ross. You know what? I don't have a problem with it. Not at all. I don't have a problem with it at all. I like what he did. I like how he did it. Now, I don't have a problem with Rick Ross coming at him on album. No. Nah. And here's why. When you do shady business like you did, you have absolute right to receive criticism. When you do it oh, in no. song the way he did it. And Rick Ross may have spoken on it maybe once or twice, but he didn't really yeah. go in there and give you a spew campaign. If you listen to the record, you fuck listen to it. If you didn't, you didn't. But he didn't go out here and try to make the campaign that you were a dog or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Let it go. It was what it was. You could have equally returned the favor. You were CEO. You're a mogul now. You don't do that. But for you to go and and walk and talk among your morals, which is, look, man, that's not what I do. I ain't mad at that. Word. I ain't mad at that at all because I can appreciate and respect that. That's not what you do. You ain't out here doing it. Cool. You understand the nature of how he went about it. You, all right, fuck it. I'm not going to really get into it. I'm not going to talk about it on wax. Maybe they had a discussion off camera. That's what seems to happen. And this is a lot of the criticism that I give a lot of the people in today's social media that a lot of things and, and people may criticize us and talking about certain things, but you got to really look at the source and how the information was provided because if certain things didn't go certain ways, we wouldn't have any ammo to talk about, mm -hmm. i.e. Kodak Black, T.I. in the game. If, if that was handled different, not to go back on that, right. we might not have had the ammo and gas of last week to talk about that bullshit. Right. If this was handled differently, I appreciate what Birdman does because I can almost guarantee, as opposed to a situation getting gassed, and by no means are we trying to gas this, we're just having great discussion because, like I said, first off, I love the song. I thought yeah. Birdman did dirty, and I thought Ross did a great job at articulating that. And I appreciate and love Birdman. Well, I kind of feel Birdman with this one a little bit when he, you know, pretty much saying like, "Nigga, mind your fucking business." At the mm -hmm. end of the day, yeah. I, I hear that too. You know what I mean? Um, if he ain't had nothing to do with it, it's, you know. But again, you know, this is how you know um, stuff goes down in this world. Some people, you know, interject themselves, and he wasn't the only one. Other people actually interject. He also talked about Rick Ross, the situation. I guess he allegedly burned DJ Khaled as well. Yeah. Crazy. Now, oh God, yeah. let me let me say, because you we, we say my fucking business this is what Birdman was saying, essentially. And we agree to that 100 percent. But mm -hmm. if you let's say you that fly on the wall in the studio and you see one of your people now, not necessarily it might not be a long time friend. It might not be this might not be a family member, but somebody that you grinded with, you know, they put in the work 
and they deserve compensation getting jerked the fuck off, mm -hmm. jerked over all mm -hmm. the way through. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you got the ammo to say something now? Or should you still mind your fucking business? If I'm there and I just know about it, I mean, I, I, me personally, it's none of my business. You know what I mean? But, um, you know, I'm not a rapper. I Maybe mean, if I was a rapper, it might be different. I might, you know, but I don't know. Maybe he felt some type of way. You know, obviously, he felt some type of way to make a whole song about it and whatnot. But, um, you know, I, it's like you can't, if somebody hits you, you can't, or you hit somebody, you can't get mad they come up and do whatever they do to you because they just responded to it. So, I mean, Birdman's well within his right to respond this way. The great thing about it is that the dispute right now is resolved. Yeah. It looks like between um, Wheezy and Birdman, and it's something really a thing of the past at this point, but it was definitely hot. I remember talking about this, you know, back then, this whole thing, it, it was popping, you know, back then. But, um, you know, I, li I love the song and whatnot, but I don't have a problem with Birdman telling Rick Ross to mind his fucking business here. I nah, don't either. And I love the song, too. Yeah. And I agree. I, I love the song. I love listening to it. I don't disagree with the song, but I'm one of the minds that keep all things in house, especially things like that. Now, we all know no that Birdman was doing some shiesty shit. We've seen it when it came to Wheezy. Seemingly, I was one to say right here on this platform numerous times that he was done just based off all the bullshit he was going through with the contract and not releasing music and just seemingly frustrated with the business going through my minor minuscule piece of that business at the time. Right. So just kind of feeling for him. I felt that that really just put a wane on him. So Birdman deserved criticism. But looking back on it now, man, you got to keep everything in house. But the crazy part about this, not to cut you no, off, no, is that blue faces now with the cash money so it's more artists don't, 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 yeah don't, i mean you know i'm just saying you know <laughs> he don't know shit about his paperwork <laughs> oh man Nothing. damn we did the video on that yep but uh yeah man that, that that's uh you know people are still going back i will say this though i think that Birdman has shown himself to be a great judge of talent yeah i mean you're talking about you know the cash money roster and what they put out so it, the good comes with the bad with that you you know even with the whole wing thing yeah pay him his money but at the end of the day i mean these guys are multi-millionaires as a result of this dude you know what i mean uh, i mean like beyond you know anything that they could ever do but i'm not saying that he should be jerking them mm -hmm. but you know they're responsible he's responsible you know for putting them guys in position yeah you could go back to the hot boys i mean he's an yeah. incredible judge of talent he's an incredible a and r he knows how to find talent out there right and he went in on in in that conversation with his battles with um no limit well master word. p word word except the shock and them boys down there and word. when you look back at it now and remembering those as kids and you having your size kind of like the rough riders and the rockefellers up here on the yeah, east yeah they were right. doing anything about right. the same time killing it down there down south to look at where they're at now and not to have our rough riders here not to have our rock hair but to still see your no limits so not, i mean i don't even want to say that because master p is a mogul yeah you know what i mean you got birdman who's a mogul jay-z is a mogul yeah. swiss beats is a mogul so salute to them brothers out there doing their thing but right. it seemed like it was a lot more solidarity with no limit and cash money a little bit i, don't, I, don't even I mean we're not because it was like i, I get what say you're that. saying because it's like rough riders was a powerhouse come on man Rockefeller was a powerhouse. It was it, back then. It was like about the labels, and it's not like that no more. It's like mm -hmm. the labels is irrelevant. You know, you had you know even the firm biz, and you know it was a click, it's the click up thing. And then uh, remember, um, who was Rod Dick? Flip mode. Yeah. You know what I mean? You had all the Wu Tang. So it ain't like that no more. We come from the heyday of hip hop, and it was just like you represented your set. Right now, Rough Riders is decimated. Even though the leader, obviously Swizzy is doing his thing salute was drag you know what those other people i don't know you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying but you know salute to him everything eve. is not made yeah yeah everything is not made the last eve you know you know she's damn near pretty much a billionaire at this point so i you know people moved on man and, and did they thing uh, i'm just glad that we were able to witness that man that's a fact what yeah. a classic era we go and we Definitely. lived in when we look at the era and rap that we had going into the late 90s and early 2000s up east down south yeah. in florida because you had trick daddy doing his thing in florida yeah, and then you had right. atlanta going out there doing their thing with the yin yang tens and little john and the east side bowls and yeah and, man. Uh, outcast with the with that real conscious soulful rap you know what i mean yeah. and just man what a great era we lived in the mm -hmm. fuck is going on now i don't know man you know would you, i wouldn't blame the south you know you can't look at all you the can't i mean they got name. a lot you of can't. great but but is you know ah man that you know i don't know man i, I you know you gotta you gotta just you know 
gravitate towards the great stuff and don't listen to the bullshit. I blame the culture, man. And I, and I blame social media to a certain degree where a lot of people started dumbing it down. And you look at 60 seconds worth of content, then it's here today, going tomorrow. It's such at a fast pace to where we can't even take time to really mm-hmm. hone in on our craft and, and, and create these things that we've seen. And a lot of people want to see things so fast that we can no longer wait for a week for a layout for something it's it <laughs> our patience are, isn't there yeah. so it, it's it's a totally different era and then you got to add in the culture with the drugs and things like that mm-hmm. we went from mm-hmm. selling it and, and wanting to sell it to our babies taking it so yeah yeah we i guess we're just going through a transition in time and the music yeah. is saying it you know? yeah definitely man but hey man we're here to witness it we're going to keep documenting it we do appreciate everybody who listens the positive the negative comments we do see them all and we, we encourage you to just to keep on you know um engaging the content man but yeah man another episode of the uncensored truth podcast you know in the books our monday episode some people probably listening to